Hello and welcome to Women in Action podcast and today we are talking to Karina Burgess uh, who is a bookkeeper based in the US and I'm really excited to talk about various things to do with finance and how to get your finances in order when you are starting your business as a private practice therapy owner. So for those therapists who are thinking about transitioning from offline therapy to online and then they're thinking, oh, I've got to get all my books in order. This is the episode for you. And um, yeah, I'm really excited to be talking to Karina today. So welcome, Karina. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. I am super thrilled to be here, super thrilled to do this. I love talking about numbers and bookkeeping and keeping things in order. So I'm super honored to be on the show with you. So thank you. Thank you so much. Tell me what you do and why you do it. So I am a bookkeeper and I've been working with various industries. I work at restaurants, therapists, um, um, doctors, equipuncture for uh, veterinarian, just various uh, different um, entrepreneurs. But I've recently just niched down to specialize so I could focus more on therapists and health coaches. And so I do this because I work for, I was in the military for almost 20 years in the U.S. military. And after that, struggling with infertility and stuff, I moved to Texas so that we could have a fighting chance at having babies. And God answered our our prayer. And so after that, I'm like, I've been crying and praying about having babies. And oops, now they showed up. But now I'm ready to take off in my career. And now I'm like, what do you do? How do you do this? Like, I know I'm called to business, but uh, it's evident that I'm supposed to be a mom right now. So how do you do both of these things? So I basically decided to open up my own bookkeeping practice. And that has been since like seven years now. So I've just been able to, um, I really believe in the foundation, like the family is important and, you know, us pouring into our kids and things like that. And so in our culture in the US, kids are, kids are inconvenience. And I don't know how it is in the UK, but I know here in America, kids are an inconvenience for most people. And I just really want to break that. And a part of doing that is opening up my own practice and at the same time, being able to provide that service for people so they have somebody who's trusted on their team, somebody that they could partner with without having to worry about, am I going to be late on my taxes? Should I pay this? Should I do that? You know, kind of thing. So that's kind of why I started what I started. Yeah. So I know um, any therapist, I think wherever they are in the world, they're going to um, worry about things like getting their accounts in order so they can hand it over to um, the IRS in your case. So for us in the UK, it's the HMRC, but basically to the tax office. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and there is always that threat thinking, oh, you know, I'm going to, maybe I haven't got the numbers right. And um, maybe I haven't got all the evidence put together and, um, you know, I don't want to get fined. And so there's all these fears, I guess, you know, and then, you know, you're always juggling as a therapist, you're juggling your family life with your business. And um, I'm interested to know that, you know, um, from a Christian point of view, as a as a Christian entrepreneur, um, I know that again that's just a different dimension I'm trying to juggle that <laughs> and trying to to be honorable to, to um, in front of God as well as to others um, right. so how do you feel um, your your faith plays a part in you juggling your business as a bookkeeper uh, and, and as as a mom that is like a powerful question That is a loaded question. And the reason I say that is because I am accountable to a higher power. I cannot half step when it comes to my clients. You know what I mean? 
I have to see, I, so I'm not a fiduciary per se, but I see myself as a fiduciary when I work with my clients, because ultimately I am helping them with what, where they're going and what they're doing, you know? So when it comes to, when I worked in the corporate side, when I worked in the military, I experienced being audited from a federal level, from a state level, from a city level, that was just a part of our jobs. And then as a person, when I got my identity stolen and stuff, um, I got audited again. And so I have that experience and those fears that you experience when you get that letter from the IRS that says, oh, you owe this much taxes, you need to pay it yesterday. And by the way, here is some extra interest that you need to pay. And you're freaking out like, what did I just get myself into? You know what I mean? So from that perspective, I totally get it. But at the other end, I'm able to sit back and like dial my clients down like, listen, let's take a breather. All right. The IRS says that you're guilty until you can prove your case. The burden of proof is on you. So let's dial back, look at the letter, see what they're needing. Do we need to talk to a CPA? Do we need to talk to a tax attorney? Um, what do they possibly need? You know what I mean? And figure this and work through it, you know, because otherwise it is a atmosphere of fear that is put out there and people just freak out. They want to crap their pants because they're like, (gasps) you know, kind of thing. This is what, this is their livelihood. And a lot of therapists that I've worked with, they, they care so much about the people that they work with that they don't want to worry about the money part the money part just scares a tar out of them. You know what I mean? So from my perspective, I feel like it's an honor and it's a privilege to work with these women because number one, I have to work is unto God. You know what I mean? In um, Corinthians, it talks about whatever you do, do you work as unto the Lord? In Colossians 3.23, do you work as unto the Lord? So I have to make sure that whatever I do, I do it because God is watching me. So if you talk to my clients, they will tell you, like, I spill the beans on myself. Like, if I screw up, I will fix it. Or, hey, I'm going to come down hard on you because this is not a play thing. You know, when it comes to your finances and business, the IRS doesn't think once you get $600 or more, you're in business Mm -hmm. per the IRS. And they don't take that lightly. They want their share. And fair enough. Give on to Caesar what's doing to Caesar. Do your part. You know what I mean? So I love talking about this. So I could talk about it all day. Yeah, but um, It's interesting. I mean, what sort of advice would you give to a therapist who just thinking, you know, you've got the safety of being an employer and you don't have to mm-hmm. think about doing your own taxes or, or VAT or whatever stage you're at. Um, you don't need to think about those things because someone else will do it for you. And then mm-hmm. you're thinking, but I'm not getting paid as much if I'm an employee if I owned my own business, I'd get paid more. Um, I could set my own rates. And so, um, but there's just that fear. So what advice would you give to someone who's just thinking about starting their own business? So that is for the individual to really sit down and look at what they're currently making. The employer does carry a lot of weight when it comes to the insurance, the overhead, the workers' comp insurance, all these different, I mean, you have several different insurances that you have to carry. Um, so the, that's, that's one perspective to look at it. But there's also the other perspective as your work hours, your quality of life. And you really have to sit down and measure those out and see, okay, what do I really want out of this life? You know what I mean? If you don't create a vision, somebody will create a vision for you and make you work for theirs. You know what I mean? So one thing that I work with with my clients is what, okay, you want to jump from an employee status to an employer status or a self-employed status. Why? Is this because this is just the thing you want? I mean, because times will get hard and you will want to throw in the towel You know what I mean? And in my case, I threw the towel in and God threw it back. Like, girl, you said this and I have that. And I'm like, but I don't want to, you know what I mean? And so if you don't create that vision as to why you're doing what you're doing, you will quit. That's right. You will quit in a heartbeat. Yeah. So my suggestion to that therapist who's looking at moving, like, first of all, be grateful for the job that God has given you. 
be great. I mean, it might not be the thing that you want. I get it. Like I sat at a job that I did for a number of years and I finished it. And then my boss gave me two more people's jobs. And I, I got the system down so well that I finished my 40 hour week in 20 hours. And I asked my boss, well, can I go home? He says, no, you know? And so I had that opportunity. Well, do I leave or do I stay and take the really nice fat paycheck? You know what I mean? But I sit and twiddle my thumb. I want to drive myself batty, you know what I mean? For the next 20 hours. And so eventually I figured out I need to make X, Y, Z amount of money to pay my bills, take care of insurance, to do different things like travel, because we love traveling to different countries and helping with orphanage, and, um, helping get kids out of sex trade and helping at orphanages and things like that. So I figured out how much money we needed and then take the big, brave step and like, I appreciate you, but it's peace out, man. I got to go. <laughs> You know, and has it been easy since? No, but it's been worth it. You know what I mean? And a big part of that, I contribute to involving God into your business. He is your partner. You know what I mean? And asking him, like purposely praying over your therapy business and saying, God, send me the clients that you want me to work with. You know what I mean? Who should I talk to today? Who can you, who do you want me to connect with? He's a master connector. He's a master accountant. He's a master create. Like, who do you want me to connect with today? You know what I mean? He will put us in places that we can never open. You know what I mean? Yeah. So as far, I know I'm going on and on I about this. But... I completely agree with all that. And I think sometimes I say to my therapists, actually, that um, if they're feeling so fearful, then you could actually transition very slowly. So you do yes. have like three days in an employed position and then you have two days where you're building up your client base um, right. as a self-employed person. And then once yes. you feel ready to take that leap and do it all full time, you can do it. But the great thing about being self-employed is the flexibility you have to manage your home life. You know, I mean, I I worked self-employed and I was homeschooling. This was long before. um, That's me. And I was like, you know, my my son was struggling at school. You know, you're doing homeschool. I am homeschooling. Yes, I am. I so I fully get it. Yeah. So they they I mean, he was like um, an older primary level, but he got bullied at school and he was really struggling with it. So we took him out of school um, and he should have gone into like secondary school, you know, high school. Yeah. Um, but um, we then discovered that he was really good at science and we didn't know that, but we only discovered it because of homeschooling. Um, right. but, but it meant that we then, um, you know, I was able to sort of work out within the flexibility of being self-employed. Yeah. Uh, the time I spent with him and the time that's organizing his home tutors um, and then, you know, me sort of doing my business and and, and that yeah. was a great thing about being self-employed I mean you can't put a price on that really um no so, yeah so but but the thing is I know from my own experience that finances and bookkeeping and paperwork and I know therapists will agree with me on this because I've spoken to some of them thinking oh my goodness I can't cope with this paperwork and these numbers and these mm. receipts and um I, yesterday I spent a whole day doing my paperwork for my for my accountant and and he's an old school kind of bookkeeper so he, mm-hmm. he does everything by paper and he wanted uh-huh. all the subtotals for um for the, for the financial year for the income and the expenditure I gave him two separate folders with all the receipts and um, mm-hmm. all the paper trails really for everything and it and it just did my head in because I was like, oh, I haven't oh, printed that off. I've got to print that one off, put it in the right section. And, uh-huh. and, I was, and so I'm transitioning from a paper-based bookkeeper to a digital bookkeeper. And I know that you're doing, yeah. you do digital. Can you explain to me oh, the benefits of that system? So this, I'm so sorry, first of all, that you had to do all of that. <laughs> Um, but when it comes to like, so our, our, our country, our economy, the world system has basically moved the digital. And so my philosophy is 
work smarter, not harder. You know what I mean? And so we have all these apps that inter- that connect with QuickBooks or Zero, Wave or Expensify, all these different platforms. You know what I mean? And so we have Google Suite. I'm like, I can go on and on about apps. There's like 15 or 20 of them every single day that come out on the market. There's bound to be something that works for your style, your learning style, your organizational style. You know what I mean? And so my favorite is absolutely zero. I've worked with QuickBooks. I work with a number of other ones, but I absolutely love zero because even though I'm accountant minded, my clients aren't. And so what I want for my therapist is even if I cannot do their books right then and there, they still have some kind of idea of where they are financially without being freaked out at looking at the numbers. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. So with zero, it has a bunch of different apps that you connect to it. But not only that, it has like a file folder where you could scan things with your phone, upload the stuff through your email. It just, you just send them there and then let the accountant deal with that kind of thing. At least that's the, yeah, that's the ease I provide for mine. That's my what, that's what I, when my new bookkeeper started talking like that, I thought, wow, I could just send it and someone else would deal with it. That's such a weight off my shoulders, really, because, you know, I, I get very grumpy about this time of year because our, our yeah. tax is due at the end of January. And um, then you have to work out all the kind of allowances. What am I allowed to claim for? And um, we, I had a, a discussion with my old bookkeeper because he's a real old school kind of guy. And I was huh. <laughs> trying to justify <laughs> this training to him, you know, because training is something, you know, I, I serve, I serve patients. So obviously I see patients online for their speech therapy needs, the speech language communication needs. And then I also see therapists online where I'm helping them build their business and grow their business. But yeah. But in order to do that, that has been a different part of my my job, if you like. It's still speech therapy, but it's mm-hmm. it, you know he was saying no, you can't claim for that training because it, it it's like you were saying when you want to go off and um do um accountancy, you've gone and you've going to do um a training course on accountancy so you can train them train these therapists to do accountancy I said no I don't want to train them to do accountancy this training course is showing them how to market their business how to put um how to sell their um, pdfs or their courses or things like that so this is a different line of revenue within your business that he doesn't get he doesn't get it at all. I mean, no. He didn't understand what Stripe was. I was trying to explain to him that my payment system is Stripe. And he said, <laughs> and I was thinking, well, you see, I get call- I sell courses and this is this is all the evidence of the courses that I've sold. And so yes. all the Stripe payments. And oh, no. I get income from these therapists, but then Stripe takes some money out for their commission. And yeah. Oh, so it's a bit like a card reader and a, like a bank. And I said, no, not really a bank. <laughs> and I just thought, <laughs> oh, how do I explain it to him? Because this is the system yeah. I use. Um, mm-hmm. And so you really need to have someone who understands you, isn't it? Yeah, you absolutely do. And that was that was a problem that I struggled with when I first went into this business because I reached back. Um, into CPAs because I'm like, I need a CPA license to do all these things. I had all the experience and training, but when I went to the CPAs and stuff, they're like, you can't do that. And so I had to take personal responsibility and dive into the tax code and like, oh yes, you can do this. And a lot of therapists are leaving money on the table because they don't know what their deductions are. So they go to their tax person, a lot of times a CPA, that doesn't keep up with their industry, that doesn't know that they could take stuff just like what you're talking about. So you have a ton of fees and stuff like that because you use Stripe that you could claim on your taxes that he's telling you, no, you can't. When you can legitimately take stuff like that because it's a part of operating your business. 
-hmm. you know? So it's super important to get somebody who is in alignment with where you're going. And even if they're not, they're not fully aligned with where you're going, they support you. They yeah. understand where you're trying to go and is willing to go above and beyond to find the resources to get you to help you so you could go where you're going. You know what I mean? I think because nobody like, will have that vision like you. Yeah, I think he was like worried that because it was a big course, I'd spent a lot of money. He thought, oh, it's going to raise a red flag. And, mm -hmm. and they're going to say that you, you know, you've spent money on something that isn't anything to do with your business. Um, and um, I think he also, you know, there were things like I said to him, I, I have contractors, subcontractors who do mm -hmm. things for my website. I've got two websites. One is yeah. for, the pair, for the patients and the parents. That's bevdo.com. Yeah. And then I have another website, which is for the therapists, the teletherapyinaction.com. So I have to manage these two websites and, you know, I haven't got time to manage them. So I have to take someone else to do that. Yeah. So I said, yeah. he's a subcontractor. So those, those are my expenses. Oh, mm -hmm. so you mean marketing? And I said, no, I don't mean marketing. They're subcontractors. <laughs> so, oh, dear. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I, I mean, at least he was honest. You know what I mean? At least he didn't say, well, I got this. And then you got totally railroaded. So kudos for him being honest with, with it. But yes, you, you totally are, at least in the US, you are allowed to take stuff like that on your taxes because it's a part of your operating your business. And it's just what you created, which hats off to you, is you created a different revenue of income within your business, which a lot of therapists struggle because they might only get paid from the state that they work in. And some states are so difficult to work with that it will take them quite a bit of a time to get paid. And they have bills to pay, they have contractors to pay, eventually employees to pay, you know what I mean? So you being able to branch off and do ver um, courses and things like that, that is, that's super awesome to say yeah. that. Yes, I think I think that's what I want therapists to be able to have other means of um, income and have that flexibility that they so desire, the time flexibility for the family, for themselves, to travel if they want to, um, mm -hmm. but to not have to worry about, oh, can mm -hmm. I afford to leave my nine to five job and when will mm -hmm. the next paycheck come in? Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's the, what sort of what sort of problems do you find have you, you you said you worked with therapists what sort of kind of problems mm -hmm. do they come to you about and how do you solve those problems uh, so the the spectrum is wide but I think a few of the common ones have been no systems they have zero systems meaning they don't know where their money is coming from per se they don't know have a system to keep their money and they don't have a system to grow their money um, and so zero is one of those systems to help you track your money. So, you know, where the money's coming from, keep, keep on tap, keep on track of, you know, the people who owe you money. I have one therapist right now that when she came on and stuff, we are still, we are, we are almost to the end of getting through her stuff. And she has people who owe her over $50,000 and she has no clue, no idea. You know what I mean? And so when we dove into her books, we're like, whoa, this is just a total mistake. This is just an overshadow. Let's dig a little deeper. Let's find out what's going on. And so that number keeps jumping up, up, up. You know what I mean? So there's been no systems in place. Like when you send out a, a, an invoice, you need to put something on there like it's due right now, due within seven days, 15 days. If you just say due whenever you get to it, nobody's gonna pay you you know what I mean if you don't follow up on that invoice and sometimes you have to constantly follow up for you to get paid and that's part of what I do with my therapist I have to follow up with some people for two years before they get paid wow. that's horrible and some of these agencies are state agencies uh, that's tough. I know I've been in that in that situation but never for two years I mean on my mm -hmm. um QuickBooks account I had one um local authority sort of education authority if you like um who 
was 90 days overdue. And so I then sent a message out saying, you know, this is overdue by, I think it was 93 days or something. So precise, the, the QuickBooks shows you. And I said, you know, I will now have to add interest on this. Yes. Because, you know, it's it's so overdue. But so that kind of gave them a bit of a, you know, kick up the backside, if you like. And they're now... <laughs> They're now, you know, doing it much more regularly. But, um, you know, I, I hate chasing people up. Um, so that was yeah. one of the reasons why I've now devised, from January onwards, I've devi- devised a system where uh, patients actually buy blocks of sessions. So they buy four mm-hmm. for each month, say. And yeah. they, get pe- they, they get charged for those four sessions in that month. And it's on a recurring basis through Stripe mm-hmm. and other platforms. Yes. Um, and then they can just shut it off. Well, I can shut it off if, you know, when they come to the end of their treatment. So actually, yes. I don't have to send any invoices out because they're all already automatically being sent out. And then yes. um, I can take control or they can con- take control when they want to stop it. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's awesome. And, you know, just just remind your new bookkeeper to track stuff like that. So because sometimes we we I have seen that. And then some of the times the patients don't use it and it will be a month, two months and they don't show up. And then you have to do a refund or um, issue a credit for them to come back and in the future kind of things. But I think just systems is super important, whatever whatever that is for you, whatever makes you feel like this is going to help you to get control of your money um, and give you visibility so you know what's going on with it. Like we're at the end of the year right now. So our tax season starts next month in January. And a lot of um, therapists, coaches and stuff have no idea how much they made um, last quarter, let alone this year. You know what I mean? They have no idea what their deductions are. So chances are they didn't do things to help them to claim their taxes, claim the benefits next year. So I like to tell people that taxes are a back end transaction that requires front end activities. You know what I mean? So you need to be doing stuff throughout the year that that is a front end activity because on the back side, which is January to April, when you do your taxes, that is the back end activity. That's when you could say, oh, I drove here and there and I could claim gas and I could claim mileage. Yeah. Oh, I bought this piece of computer equipment for my business and I use it to do X, Y, Z. You know, you have to support what you're doing, whatever that is, whatever that looks like for you. Um, you have to have the supporting documents to stand on. If you don't have those, like if you don't have a website here in the U.S., the IRS thinks that you're not legitimate. A lot of people don't think about just a simple splash page. How a splash page? Say you're a bit in business. This helps to say, hey, she's legit. Yeah. You know what I mean? People could go and find you and start looking about you and things like that. Just simple things like that. Systems. It's very systems. true, actually, you know, because before I came online with you, I was thinking, oh, I wonder where I'm going to find the website. And I just Googled you and I found I found your website. I didn't go to Facebook because I know we connected on Facebook, but I, yeah. I just went to Google and I looked at your website and I thought, wow, this is amazing. Such a good website because I'm yeah. a bit nerd when it comes to websites. And- That's okay. <laughs> yeah, that is totally okay. And it's my website right now is just my brochure. It gives all the things that I do in, in the, some of the stuff in detail because like, there is nothing like you go into somebody and you have no idea what they do and what to expect on that call. So I, I went ahead and I listed an onboarding process, what to expect, the timeline, things like that. So you're not freaking out. I think that's one of the things that I'm able to help lower people's stress level because numbers are already like, ah, I'm going to die yeah. kind of thing. So I'm just like, I am trying to do whatever I can to help them lower their stress level just just enter in and then moving forward it just gets better so yeah um I was just going to say um this is a really great segue um for you to actually share um your your website and just share where people can make contact with you um I'm just going to pause the video here 
Okay, so this is your website. As I said, I looked at it and Google help, helpfully found it for me. Um, so just talk through that timeline that you were mentioning about. So when it comes to um, um, bookkeeping, then you go on my website at karinaburgess.com, click on work with me. I offer consultation for clients who, you know, for therapists who are just starting and they're like, I am not yet ready to take on a bookkeeper. I can't afford one. I don't want to do it, but I at least want to have my stuff ready. I want to know what's going on in my books. I want to do this starting out. I highly recommend that because that means when you get ready to outsource your stuff, you know what to look for. So for that, I do offer consultation, which is a one-on-one -on -one consultation. And then for my therapists who have been doing this a while and they're like, all right, I cannot do this anymore. Bookkeeping is exhausting. I just want to get rid of this. I need to hire somebody. Remind, remember me, Karina Burgess, karinaburgess.com. And so when you click on monthly bookkeeping services, I do a basically an onboarding timeline where after they apply, they go through a proposal, the contract is signed if they're a good fit for us, um, onboarding things that they have to do, the setup, setup is complete. We get on the phone with them, on Zoom chat with them, you know, and when bookkeeping starts. And then I further break down what the bookkeeping and compliance review looks like for them. Um, that includes zero historical data, sales, just a number of things. If they have contractors, what that looks like. Um, if they have payroll, because I do have clients who have payroll for, um, for their um, behavioral therapists, things like that. So we just break everything down. If they have 1099s, because I've had people who are started at 1099s, which are contractors, and then move to employees because they've built a team. So those are all different um, um, things that needs to be done, needs different eyes on their books. And so we take all of that into consideration if they need add-on services because they have, like what you had, a course. Does your state need to uh, charge you sales tax on that course? We help you with that. Some places do, some places don't, you know what I mean? Um, so we have all of this that we do so they can see what there is required of them in a like a, a snapshot kind of thing before they jump on the call and say, hey, I'm going to work with her. They have some kind of idea of what this process looks like before they get started. And then once we get started, we open up into a portal on the back end that shows them all the stuff that they need. Like some people are still doing business under their social security number because they're just starting out. Don't do it, Finn. Don't do it. Go ahead and get yourself an EIN number. Don't put your social security number out there. You know what I mean? So it's just simple things like that, simple in my head, <laughs> <laughs> that the therapists need to know about. So as they're making that transition or if they're scaling their company, they have some kind of idea of what to do, what to look for. Oh, that's great. Uh, and that actually, when you get all the, that sort of information, it takes away the fear because you only, you're only afraid of things because of the unknown and because you, of your imagination, isn't it? Your imagination thinking, well, if I, if I get it wrong, then I'm going to get busted by the IRS or whatever it is. Um, so yes. that's usually why. So it's good to have that information um, yes. in front of you. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so, so it'd be great to know how people can get in touch with you. So if people are looking for me, they could find me on my website at KarinaBurgess.com. I'm also on Facebook at Karina Burgess Biz. And then if they want a daily sneak peek into my life, like I homeschool, um, I have several different things going on. I'm vegan, I'm a Christian, all these things and get to really know me then please jump on Instagram, Karina Burgess, uh, Instagram.com slash Karina Burgess. And you'll see all the down and dirty things that we do, places we go, things we like, dislike, things like that, as well as accounting tips to help them grow their company in the meantime. That's great. Thank you so much for, I will put all that information in the show notes on um 
the teletherapyinaction.com forward slash podcast. And um, so you'll see that information there. And um, Karina will let me know all those sort of social media handles so I can link her back to her website and other places. So thank you so much, Karina, for um, coming on Women in Action. And um, I'm really excited because before we came online, we we were talking about uh, me launching my course again in February. And um, I know there are speech therapists out there in the in the US who are thinking of setting up their own business. Um, but probably this is one area, bookkeeping and taxes and all that sort of thing that is holding them back. So it'd be really great to have um, some bonus training from um, yeah. Karina to um, help them uh, get started. So thank you very Absolutely. much for offering to do that. And um, we'll be in touch. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Bev. I really appreciate it. I've enjoyed myself today. And I really hope that your therapists enjoy this, um, this interview and things. Like I said, I'm just down to earth. I'm, I'm just wide open, down to earth as they come. And it's possible, it's doable. Just get off the couch, stop coming in hind, start your business and get help. You know what I mean? You can't do this alone, but you're created and designed for this, for this season, for this time. So Thank you so much for having me. Oh, wasn't that a great interview? And I, as I said, um, there are so many sort of technicalities that we need to consider when we are setting up our own private practice. And whether we're in the UK or whether we're in the US, at the end of the day, we owe our taxes when we get our income. There's obviously things that we need to allocate to pay the tax authority wherever that is but whether that's in the uk it's hmrc and whether in in the us it's irs and wherever you are in the world we owe our taxes um, and it's so good to have someone like karina who is a qualified bookkeeper to get our business organized get our finances organized so if you want to know more about that then make sure you head over to teletherapyinaction.com forward slash podcast and uh, look for the interview with Karina Burgess. I look forward to seeing you soon and and if you're thinking of setting up your own private practice then head over to teletherapyinaction.com forward slash resources to find my teletherapy checklist my marketing checklist which will take you through what you need to put in your website and how to market your business so until the next podcast bye for now